Hello and welcome to a brief presentation on the British Law Centre Diploma in English Law and Legal Skills. My name is Steve Terrett and I'm the course director. During this presentation, I will give you some core information to help you answer the standard interrogatives or question words that you can see on the slide there. For further information, please see our website at www.britishlawcentre.co.uk. UK. When you visit the website, you can see information about why it's advantageous to study English law, much more information about the diploma itself, including what we teach, who we are, and how we teach it. During the diploma, we study four areas of English law. The first is the English legal system. During this module, you will look at how it's possible to organize a country and its constitutional structures without a written constitution and without a written code of any kind, whether criminal, civil or administrative. You will see how human rights can be protected, notwithstanding the fact that judges are incapable of challenging any legislation that comes from Parliament. And of course, there is no constitutional court. You will also learn how to interpret statutes, and very importantly, how to use cases. The use of case law in a precedent-based system like the UK is of course of crucial importance and will help you when you study the later subjects. The first of those later subjects is contract law. During this module, we look at the rules governing how contract contracts are formed, how the terms of contracts are categorized and what impact this categorization has on the remedies that are available if those terms are breached. We look at standard terms that may be found in many commercial contracts, such as force majeure or indemnities, and rules governing the remedies that are available if one of the parties breaches the contract. The next module is tort law. Tort is a kind of civil liability that is non-contractual. You may know it as delict. The English legal system has very particular rules to establish owes a duty of care to another person so that if that duty is breached, they can be sued for negligence. During this module, we look at a wide variety of cases that span a range of industries and also cover both commercial and non-commercial situations. The final substantive law module is equity and trusts. Equity is a unique feature of the English legal system. Although its roots are very historical, it continues to play an extremely important role in modern day disputes about property rights. There is rarely anything comparable to this in any country outside the UK. But of course, many countries use trusts to organize private wealth. And this is also an important part of the equity module. Whilst looking at each of these substantive law modules, we also teach you a legal skill. The UK places a great deal of importance on teaching legal skills alongside substantive law. The law is an extremely practical subject, so it's only by using practical and real life examples and seeing how the law works in reality that we can truly understand it. Theory alone is simply not good enough. The first area of legal skills that we teach on the diploma concern litigation. We begin by providing you with a real life case. During our meetings, we will discuss how you would approach the case if you were the lawyer, either for the prosecution or for the defense. Contrary to what you may believe from watching Hollywood films, the success to litigation happens before the trial begins, rather than when witnesses actually take the witness stand. So we'll study a methodology that is designed to give you the greatest chances for success litigation. And if you're not a litigation lawyer, you will also find that those skills are capable of being used in other areas of law. We then move to look at how to approach the question of oral advocacy. We consider two types of advocacy. The first is making a speech to a judge, which is known as argument advocacy, the type that we are more familiar with from the television. In other words, 
questioning witnesses. And here we will teach you skills for two types of questioning, namely examination in chief, that's asking questions of your witnesses, and cross-examination, that's asking questions of the other side's witnesses. Even if you come from a country in which there is no cross-examination, you will soon discover that in arbitration, then rules similar to the UK's rules on cross-examination do exist. So nonetheless, it's a very useful skill. And again, even if you don't plan to become a litigation lawyer, you will discover that the techniques we give you delivering oral advocacy will come in handy in any other situation where you need to speak in public. We look at the next range of skills during the contract law module and we will discuss how to draft contracts and ensure that the party's desires are put into the contract in a way which is designed to minimize feuds. Now, before we can identify what those desires are, we need to negotiate a contract. And so one of the skills will be involved in performing a contract negotiation with you acting on behalf of one or another party to a potential contract and discussing how that contract should be written with colleagues from the BLC who are representing the other side. Now when, or perhaps I should say if, you come to an agreement in terms of the contents of that contract, we will then move on to the stage of legal drafting. And here we will focus on the importance of language, the need for foresight, and a knowledge of the various types of standard or boilerplate clauses that can come to your rescue when drafting a contract. When we study the tort law module, we will undertake exercises that involve you in either interviewing a client or writing a legal memorandum to a client on a real life issue of law. Now, if you've never written a memorandum to you're a student, or perhaps you're not even a lawyer and not planning to become one, that may sound rather daunting. But don't worry, because throughout the course, we are giving you advice on how to write various types of written work, whether that is assignments, memoranda, or advice to clients and we'll help you improve your written advocacy just as much as your oral advocacy. So by the time you finish the diploma, you have acquired a very nice portfolio of substantive law knowledge and also legal skill. In addition to the regular content of the diploma, the British Law Centre also organises a number of additional voluntary events that you may wish to participate in. The leading one of these is a Central and Eastern European moot competition, during which moot teams from all across the region compete against each other to argue various issues of European law on behalf of their clients. They do this in front of a panel of judges made up of real-life advocates general of the European Court of Justice, judges of the General Court and the European Court of Justice and renowned academics from the University of Cambridge and elsewhere. The competition takes place at a different venue each year and we were lucky to mark the 25th anniversary of the competition at the European Court of Justice itself in Luxembourg. This competition and other events that the BLC organises are a great way for you to develop and improve on your communication and research skills. Let's now take a quick look at the BLC website so you can see how the materials are organised that you will use when studying the various substantive law modules. This shows an example from the part of the website dealing with contract law remedies, interpretation and exclusion clauses. You can see that at the top of the page is the essential reading that you should do before each teaching visit. This is based on custom designed reading materials prepared especially for BLC students. Of course we also send in advance the questions that you should look at and think about so that we can discuss them during the teaching visit. Underneath that you'll see the lectures that we have recorded that you can listen to anytime you like to try and get more information on the relevant area of law. And if you're particularly interested in this area of law, we always give additional optional reading so that you can go further into the areas that you're most interested in. We also provide a range of multimedia materials including lectures given to the BLC students and judgments handed down by the UK's courts including the Supreme Court. The website enables us to deliver the course in a number of complementary ways. Firstly, you will receive access to over 50 lectures, each of which lasts for 90 minutes. So that's 75 hours of potential lecture material. That's delivered by 
the members of the BLC teaching team and guest visitors from Cambridge University, other leading UK universities and EU institutions. This is followed up by face-to-face -face teaching sessions in small groups. These are interactive and practical, not theoretical. They provide an opportunity to test and to deepen your understanding on the relevant area of law and to engage in group work with each other and with the teacher. And of course, it's a great opportunity to practice your English legal vocabulary. The legal skills elements and workshops that we teach are taught by the BLC teaching team or visiting experts or representatives of the law firms with which we cooperate. This enables us to bring a very practical edge to the course, which we are sure you'll find interesting whether or not you are currently a practicing lawyer. In order to assess your progress throughout the course, we require you to undertake four written assessments. These happen as you work your way through the course materials. So as each substantive law module ends, you will be given an assignment that relates to that module. For example, you will finish contract law and then be given the contract law assignment. You will be given approximately 30 days to complete the assignment at home. You are encouraged to use the materials that we gave you and to apply the legal skills that you have acquired throughout the course. These assessments will involve a range of styles. Some of them will be based on problems. In other words, you are given a story involving some characters and asked to apply the relevant area of law to the story so that you advise those characters. Other assignments will require you to critically analyze a particular area of law. Alternatively, you may be asked to draft a memorandum to a client advising them on their position as far as the relevant area of law is concerned. Assessment is never a pleasant topic, but please don't worry about any of this. We're here to help both in classes and outside classes, and we've prepared a range of materials for you to help you write these assignments, and we will give you lots of feedback that help you to improve. This is, after all, one of the reasons why you're joining the course and by the time you finish your written advocacy and writing style will be much improved from what it was at the beginning. At this point I'll say just a few words about the teaching team. Again we think that what we offer combines the best of both worlds because on the one hand you will have a resident teaching team to discuss the issues with in the small group classes. And the fact that you will often meet with the same people enables us to get to know each other better and that helps the learning process because you'll feel more confident about being active in class if you're comfortable with the people who are delivering those classes. And as we get to know you better, we'll be able to assess which issues interest you the most and whether there are any areas that we should be spending more time on or perhaps that you require more help with. But we're also very fortunate to be supported by a variety of people who come from extremely renowned academic and professional backgrounds. Without naming names, the faces on the slide that you're looking at now include leading academics from the University of Cambridge, judges from the UK Supreme and Civil Courts, all of whom have done things on behalf of the BLC, including having written materials or delivered lectures, or taken parts in podcasts specifically for BLC students. And we're always delighted to be joined by such esteemed colleagues and friends who are willing to share their specialist knowledge with us and with all of the BLC participants. The next slide takes a look at the calendar. This is available on the website by clicking on the events tab or by typing in the URL at the bottom of the screen. By clicking on this, you can see all of the events at the various British Law Centre venues that will be happening throughout the academic year that's coming up. But if you wish to search for events that are happening just at your centre, then by typing them into the search bar at the top, typing in your city name, the website will then filter them to show the dates of the meetings at your particular centre. Here Budapest is shown merely by way of an example. You can see that there are eight visits and they happen approximately once a month. If any of you are still wondering why it's a good idea to study the British Law Centre Diploma, let me recap. Some of these reasons will depend upon your current position, whether you're a student, a practicing lawyer, or not a lawyer at all. But other advantages will be common regardless of your, your current position. 
Anyone who is interested in comparative law will gain an enormous amount of knowledge by comparing their legal system with the English legal system, which is probably the furthest away in terms of its constitution, substantive law content and procedure than any other country you could possibly imagine. This will help law students to stand out from amongst the many thousands of other graduates who are leaving university and looking for the same jobs. It will also be very good evidence of your linguistic skills if you intend to study abroad. If you're a trainee or perhaps even a practicing lawyer, then we think you'll enjoy our focus on legal skills. Good English legal language is of course necessary whenever you talk to a client who is foreign and prefers to use English language rather than your national language. The oral advocacy skills that we teach will be useful in international arbitration regardless of the country that you come from. The way in which negotiation skills are taught may also be very different from how you've studied negotiation or practiced negotiation in your home country. And of course, contract drafting skills are a very useful tool for everyone. If your clients trade with entities in the UK, it will of course be very useful for you to remain in contact with English law so that you can advise them on updates that may be happening following Brexit. And for everyone else, whether students, lawyers, translators or others, we think that you will find the course interesting and fun. If you know anyone who currently is a student of the course or previously has studied the course, why not speak to them? We're confident that they will tell you very positive things about their experience. The British Law Centre and its diploma are organised by a special educational charity that is based at the University of Cambridge Law Faculty. The support and financing that this charity has received since it was first created in 1992 has allowed us to provide the diploma at a heavily subsidised price. Put simply, both in terms of quantity and quality, the prices that are payable for the course are nowhere near the true market value. However, a fee is payable and those fees are shown on the slide now. The fee differs for full-time students and non-students. For full-time students, which includes trainee lawyers but not qualified lawyers, the price is 599 euros. This is the sole fee payable for the entire year of studies, including all materials and teaching visits. For anyone who is not a student, the applicable fee is 799 euros. In both cases, this fee can be reduced by 99 euros if you pay before the 31st of July. Additionally, it's possible to pay in two instalments. 50% of the course fees need to be paid before the course begins and before the 31st of July for those wishing to rely on the early bird reduction. The remaining 50% is to be paid in February of 2021. I hope that the information I've provided today is enough to convince you that it's a good idea to join us at the British Law Centre for the Diploma in English Law and Legal Skills. We highly recommend that you read the website for further information and also that you follow us on Facebook at BritZen in order to keep up to date with the events and activities that we organise. Alternatively, please feel free to contact us through the webpage at britishlawcentre.co.uk forward slash contact. I hope that we've managed to encourage you to join the course and that we will receive your application via the website at britishlawcentre.co.uk forward slash apply. Thanks for taking the time to watch and we really look forward to meeting you and to teaching you in classes starting from October 2020.